Hello everyone, welcome back and I'm also glad to be back. I'm Coach Orlan and we will talk about Petty Cash Fund. If you remember our previous video, we talked about the establishment of impress system. The impress system is where all deposits or cash receipts within the day are deposited to the bank intact and all disbursements are made through checks. Sometimes though, that rule about disbursements is impractical. If expenses are only consisting of small amounts, it would be impractical for even the smallest amount of expenses to be approved by the highest authority like the CEO or CFO. As such, a petty cash fund is established for small amounts of cash disbursements. Petty cash fund is money set aside for small amounts of cash disbursements. Through this system, we don't need anymore to seek approval to the highest management regarding small amounts of expenses. Instead, lower management can just approve provided that it is in accordance with company policy regarding petty cash fund. We have different concerns regarding petty cash fund. The entry to establish petty cash fund is a debit to petty cash fund and credit to cash in bank. Take note that both of these account titles are included in cash and cash equivalents. Therefore, the establishment of petty cash fund does not decrease your overall cash balance. It merely reallocates from one account title, cash in bank, to another cash account title, petty cash fund. When there are disbursements out of the petty cash fund, they are not immediately recorded in the journal entries. These are initially segregated and recorded under the petty cash register or logbook. Since there is no journal entry at the time of disbursements regarding petty cash fund, the petty cash fund balance do not decrease. There are no expenses recognized, so net income is not yet affected. And since there is no decrease in the petty cash fund, there is also no decrease in the overall cash balance. There is, however, a journal entry when it comes to replenishment. Replenishment happens when the petty cash fund or the currencies in the cash box of the petty cash fund is already so low. So you need to refill it under the set amount of budgeted petty cash fund. When that happens, we debit all the various expenses and related current asset accounts and credit cash in bank. So a credit to cash in bank represents that a certain amount of cash in bank has been withdrawn from our bank account and deposited to our petty cash fund. Take note that this journal entry do not affect our petty cash fund. Why is that? When we replenish the petty cash fund, it does not really affect petty cash fund. Well, this is because it consists of two entries. The first entry is to recognize all the expenses, so debit all the expenses as well as the related current assets, and then credit petty cash fund. But since the balance of petty cash fund is refilled back in full, we will debit petty cash fund as a second journal entry and credit cash in bank. Overall, your petty cash fund balance is not adjusted. Your cash in bank based on this journal entry is decreased and your net income also decreased because replenishment is the time where you will recognize and record expenses involving petty cash fund. You can also increase or decrease petty cash fund. When you increase your petty cash fund, you debit petty cash fund and credit cash in bank. When you decrease your petty cash fund, it's the other way around. You debit cash in bank and credit petty cash fund. When there is no replenishment entry at the end of the year, when that happens, we will debit all the expenses. However, since it is not replenished anymore, we will not credit cash in bank. Instead, we will credit petty cash fund. Take note that when we do not have a replenishment entry at the end of the period, the petty cash fund balance will be decreased. But if there is a replenishment entry beforehand, the petty cash fund is not affected. Cash shortage is a temporary account. This will be eliminated once investigation is conducted. If upon investigation we discover that the cash shortage is due to the petty cash custodian's fault, then we debit receivable from employee and credit cash shortage. So we will recognize a current asset. However, if upon investigation we're not able to find the root cause of cash shortage, we will simply debit a loss and credit cash shortage. Upon inspection of the cash box, we found the following. We have one 500 peso bill, two 100 peso bill, one 20 peso bill, and one 50 peso bill. We also have a 20 peso coin, that is rare, a 10 peso coin, Two five peso coins and then two two peso coins under this portion of the cash box 
we have a sealed envelope pertaining to a birthday cake for Ma'am Grace. And it's marked and received by our petty cash custodian and it's worth 200 pesos. Since this envelope is sealed, we will disregard it from our petty cash account since it does not belong to us. We also have the following forms. We have an IOU form, which is an advances to employee worth 1,250. We have two petty cash vouchers. The first one is a miscellaneous expense worth 1,100. And the second one is a transportation expense for 1,200. Lastly, we have two checks. Let's review each. First one, the account name is under our company and it's to the order of Juan de la Cruz, our petty cash custodian. It is worth 3,550, which means that this represents a replenishment check. Therefore, this will be accounted in our replenishment entry. Second one is a personal check from Juan de la Cruz to our company. Since this is a personal check, this is a disregarded in our replenishment entry. Therefore, what are our journal entries? First, for the establishment of Petty Cash Fund, we debit Petty Cash Fund and credit cash in bank for 4,000 pesos. Second entry, well, is for our disbursements. For December 10, December 15, and December 20, there are no journal entries. These are merely recorded under our Petty Cash Register. However, in our replenishment entry, this will be a debit for transportation expense, 1,200, advances to employees, 1,250, and miscellaneous expense, 1,100. The issue now is to know how much will be our credit for cash in bank and how much will be our cash shortage or overage. To compute for that, there are two methods. First, we can account for our cash count. Our cash count is 812 pesos worth of coins and currencies as well as our replenishment check worth 3,550. So the total cash accounted or total to be accounted is 4,362. We subtract that from our set petty cash balance which is worth 4,000. Therefore, since the cash counted is more than the set petty cash balance, we have a cash overage amounting to 362. Another way is our journal entry method. The replenishment entry would consist of these three debits pertaining to transportation expense, advances to employees, and miscellaneous expense. And our credit would be cash in bank. Cash in bank would be 4,000, our set petty cash balance, minus our coins and currencies amounting to 812. That would be 3,188. So for this entry to be balanced, there must be a credit amounting to their difference worth 362 because we have a credit that will represent our cash overage. Take note that this entry does not affect our petty cash fund balance. It does, however, decrease our net income and it does decrease our overall cash balance because we credited cash in bank. If there is no replenishment entry, instead of crediting cash in bank, we will credit petty cash fund for the same amount, 3,188 pesos. We still have the same amount of cash overage. Let's have another situation. What if this envelope here is actually open and upon inspection, the cash is empty? This must mean that whatever the amount that is initially contained in this envelope is mixed in with our currencies and coins. So therefore, we must exclude and segregate 200 pesos because this is for the birthday cake of Mam Grace. So we remove 200 pesos here. Okay, put it back here. Happy birthday, Mam Grace. So therefore, our revised coins and currencies would amount to 612. Our replenishment check is still the same, amounting to 3,550. Our total cash counted will now be 4,162. Since our petty cash fund balance is set at 4,000, there will still be a cash overage but this time at a lower amount of 162. Again, we can conduct a journal entry here, a debit to transportation expense, debit advances to employees, and a debit to miscellaneous expense. Then we will credit cash in bank, which will be the difference between our set petty cash balance of 4,000 
minus our currencies and coins amounting to 612. We will credit 3,388. The debit side minus the credit side will result to a credit of 162. Since this is a credit, this will also be cash overage. That concludes our petty cash fund discussion. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our YouTube channel so you could learn more about accounting. See you in our next video. Bye!